Yo, are you guys ready for this? Because honestly, I don't know if I am. But here we go. Also, this green screen has been giving me a lot of hassle recently. Not impressed. The trade deadline will be over. Maybe long over by the time this video comes out. But there have been some crazy moves going on. So I'm recording this video on March 1st, which means there's still a couple days of trades left. But I feel like a lot of the big pieces have already been moved. There's still some names like Jacob Chikrin and a couple others, but... Yeah, it's like, you know, not limiting who we could draft that much. However, Patrick Kane is now eligible. Just saying. So let's go ahead, randomize, find out what team we're going to be using. It is the Avs. I feel like we land on the same five or six teams every time. Do you guys know who's definitely not ready for this? Spoiler alert, it's Jabroni. Definitely not going with owner mode. Fantasy draft, we will be doing. Salary cap, we'll leave that on. Player morale. Mm, no, but we will allow CPU trades. And I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. Ready to rumble, if you will. If you won't, no worries. Waiver notifications and trade offer. Only send me stars. All right, I'm not looking to trade a seventh for a seventh. All righty then. We are going to get pick number 25. I feel like we're going to have a late one here. But let's see what happens. We get pick number three. Wow, very late. So it doesn't really matter. We couldn't have taken either of these guys. We also can't take Kale McCarr though, which is a bit of a rough go. Oh dear. Oh no. I could be crazy, but I think the only player here that has been on multiple teams is Artemi Panarin. Crosby, no. Fox, no. I could see an argument for this one, but he never played for them. Kachuk, yeah. 92 overall and making 9.5 versus 9 Ooh, actually you know what what to do what to do i just took panarin recently that's the only reason i'm debating all right fine we'll go with chucky that's on you guys though you convinced me i heard you ek65 all the way up to 90 overall well deserved he's been having himself a year he's got an x factor and ability and you know what he has played for more than one team. Linus Allmark has also played for multiple teams. 90 overall. Our picks are going to be basically back to back here, which is nice. I think... Ooh, this is tough, actually. I will take EK to get a very, very solid defenseman back there. An offensive defenseman, nonetheless. And then I think I'm going to take Allmark as well. Just to get the goalie situation sorted out. I have an extremely solid starter. Linus... You're joining the squad. I really do want to grab a center next, but who is the question? They're all making a lot. Giroux at 6.5 isn't terrible. 87 overall. Kopitar, no can do. Malkin, nope. Bergeron, nope. John Tavares is eligible, but 87 overall and 11 million. I'm going to have to pass that up. Chandler, you know, 2.7 at 86 overall. That is quite tempting. So we have Chandler. Our first line's coming together quite nicely. I could pick up Pavelski to be first line right winger. That's got to be plus five chemistry. There's no way that it's not. Latang shoots right. That's unfortunate. I think Burns does as well. We're going to scoop up Captain America. And then I want to grab a defenseman next. So there was a big gap in picks. Defenseman. He's got abilities and X-Factors, right? Ooh, only abilities. Yeah, he didn't. He never had an X-Factor. It was always just abilities. I don't know what I'm talking about. Eckholm, now a member of the Edmonton Oilers. Dumba is there. Hmm. It's only one player with abilities. And I'm going for line chemistry. But, ooh, I don't think he's played for anybody other than Minnesota. Well, that's taken off the table. Eckholm could be a pretty good partner for Carlson. 86 overall. Not the cheapest contract in the world, but seems to be sort of... In the middle compared to the other ones i'm seeing here so let's go ahead and make that final a really solid way to start the second line is anthony duclair so we are going to be doing just that another humongous gap in our draft picks where's all the centers at you already know i would if i could david i guess we'll go with max domi should i take a right winger who's also making exactly three million dollars just to make it the the nine million line dom kubalik he is a left winger he shoots left. However, we could probably just play someone on the right, or he could just be an extremely good third liner. Riley's played for a few teams. He's a sniper, so he could be on the second line, basically forcing Dom down. Well, maybe. We'll see what happens. I'll put the lines together, and we will go from there. So I shouldn't really jump to any conclusions yet, but I think that Riley is going to be a solid selection for our team. 
Getting a backup goalie I don't think is going to be too difficult. As a matter of fact, I think it'll be quite easy. But what I would like to do now is draft a couple defenders, and I'm going to be starting with Matheson. Miller's actually kind of been a suitcase, but I am going to choose him to be playing on the second line. There's a lot of good defensemen here. I might just finish up our defensive core and then grab our depth. Might not be a bad idea. The man, the myth, the legend, Luke Shen, returning to his draft squadron, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And he is going to be drafted right now to the Colorado Avalanche. Mans is huge. Six foot six. And he's got four and a half star physicality. Zadorov will be the newest member of the Colorado Avalanche. Welcome aboard. Let's scoop up a goalie and then we will finish up our offense, which will be the only remaining thing. You know what? For old time's sake, I'm going with Nettie. Only 75 face-offs. Come on, Teddy. You got to be better than that. Actually, I don't know if we can even draft him anyway. He's only played for Pittsburgh. I genuinely had no idea. Only because I talked about it in a recent video, or maybe that video hasn't come out yet. I don't know. It's sort of random, the order that they are released in. But, Mans has 90 face-offs. I hope I remember to look and see what his face-off percentage is to see if... Has he played for more than one team? Hold on. I'm almost positive that he has. In fact, I shouldn't even really look this up because I'm almost guaranteeing it. He has. I'm just going to finish up the center core right now with Frederick Goudreau. Not very physical, but 90 discipline. And he's got 77 face-offs. Whatever, I'm drafting him anyway. Third line right winger Phil Kessel. Sounds good to me. He puts up points. All right, cheeseburger, let's get it done. I honestly respect it. I wish I could do that. Guy eats like an absolute animal before the game and then goes out there and is flying. I would be dying. We're going to have all the money in the world to get our final player. Corey Perry is prime for the fourth line. I love having this guy on the team. We have the cap space, which means it's happening. Milan Lucic, 79 overall, is the final Last and definitely not least pick for the Colorado Avalanche multi-team squad. I always like to look at this screen and give you guys my sort of initial thoughts at the entire roster listed out. And I feel like we're sort of a middle of the pack team that will be wild card E. Sim up to the regular season as we do before tossing the lines together, even though, you know, they're already tossed together. But I'm gonna retoss them. Here we go. Please have chemistry. The first line's only a plus one. Well, that's rude. They want Phil Kessel in the first line. That's the first decision I've ever respected Jabroni making. However, I will not allow it. And I'm also gonna go and send down the players that I did not draft, aka you two. I don't know. We might have a bit of a stinker here. Do we at least have good defensive chemistry? Oh my word. If I move Luke Shen up, at least it is triple zero. But that's about as good as it's gonna get. Oh, I blame our coach. I should fire him, but I'm not gonna. I've made a minor move. Domi is gonna be the second line center. We will have Chandler on the left wing and then Duclair on the right side. If it's not working out, I'll move it back. But this is how we are running for now. Linus, I'm going to need a career year out of you. AKA exactly what you're doing in real life right now. We have roll three lines. So this line ain't getting a whole lot of ice time. Predictions, eh? Well, I am going to say that we get 41 wins. I think we're going to just surpass 40. I will say Kachuk gets the most points. Or will I? The plot thickens. I kind of want to take EK65. No, I'll stick with Chucky, and I'll say 70. Flat. And again, at the trade deadline, if there are players available that have played for multiple teams, then we can go ahead and try to acquire them. But we'll see what's going on at that point. 7-5-2, and two, so it's a very untelling start as to how the rest of the season's gonna go. But I can already envision a massive L streak inbound. Or maybe we're just good? Look at us go. 17-10-2? Currently second in the division. We lost two games, but bounce right back with three W's. Make it four. We're unstoppable. If you look at our division, it's really only a three-team race, which is great for us. Well, four-game L streak right there doesn't help our positioning, but we are still sitting a lot better than the team in fourth. There's an L, so we have 32 wins going into the trade deadline. I'm going to set us to be a buyer, and let's enter, find out who's available, 
And if we can actually make any trades, wouldn't that be something? But there's no way. I do, however, have to at least try. See, trading draft picks kind of seems like cheating because it's a fantasy draft. We could make this work, but should we? We might even be able to bring back... We definitely will be able to bring back another piece. How's he doing so far? So, Chucky has 59 points in 60 games. Basically, point a game at this point in time. Hatrick Kane, struggling a little bit. Dash 8, but... How's St. Louis doing overall? Not well, so that explains it. Barbashev was also traded. So you know what? If we pick up Barbashev as well, that's two pretty big names traded this year. Kachuk would obviously be a big loss for us, but we're getting back Kane, who can hopefully score some goals. This is completely changing our entire team. However, I feel like I have to do it for the people because Patrick Kane was like the biggest trade this year, you know? I gotta act quick too, because I don't want someone else to come in here and absolutely destroy us. What if has, Nick Jensen must have played for multiple teams? Because he's a capital now, but he did not start there. So I'm gonna try this. It might actually just go through. Proposed trade, and they're gonna be cheering in the streets. All right, chill with that. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just maybe made our team worse. Let's go find out. Nuge and Boyd headed to Florida in exchange for... I think that Montreal got finessed. St. Louis making moves at this year's trade deadline. Larkin also gone in exchange for Savoie and Cormier. Oh, we're moving mad now. Look at this. Plus five on the first line. Pavelski going to be the centerman. Duclair left winger. Absolute thing of beauty. We got two snipers. And I believe, you know, they could both... Kind of double as a playmaker. But if not, then we have Pavelski in the middle regardless. Our second line is Smith, Kessel, and Chandler. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm fine with that. Phil's probably doing bits. Not really, but I'll allow it. I think I like the way I have it laid out here. Fourth line. How many minutes are they even getting? Because we have the roll three lines. 849. Oh boy. Yeah, they're not getting out there a whole lot. Defensively, we added Jensen, who probably won't even make the lineup. Never mind. But they took out Luke Shen. There is a 0% chance I'm allowing that to happen. We're going right back to the way we had it. Here we go. The team has been changed drastically. Will it be for better or for worse? Let's find out. We're going to start losing every single game, aren't we? Start off hot with a record of three... Oh my word. We're still third in the division. Teams are catching up. That's a critical win there. We take shootout losses all day. There's another L. 82 points. We got to start winning some games here, guys. We're going to miss the playoffs, aren't we? 30... Yes? 41 wins? Three straight wins in a row? And we close it out with a 5-1-W over the Winnipeg Jets. To conclude a 43-win season, I think it was? 91 points, but we are in. That's all that matters. Oh, it wasn't even close. They had 83, so we were pretty much locked in anyway. But those wins at the end definitely added up. Let's have a look at the entire league. Instead of divisions. Golden Knights, 113 points. They had McDavid, Zabenejad, and Kreider. That's like, the line chemistry there's got to be a plus eight. Gerard and Barry, Orlov and Spence. I don't know who that is, but it worked out for them. Yo, what? Look at their second line. Blake Wheeler, Evgeny Malkin, and Mark Stone. Yeah. I guess they would go on to win 200 games this year. We finished 16th. The Ducks got finessed. 13 and no playoffs. The Yotes came last. Their team consists of... How did they even draft this team? I guess they got some pieces for the future, but overall... Ugh. It definitely would have been Chucky, but he's gone. So now we have Pavelski with 68. Carlson 67. Kane ended up putting up 61. Did he pick it up for us at least? 16 points in 22 games. That's not great, actually. Allmark played outstanding. A 917 save percentage. Six shutouts on the year. 243. I love that for you. Varlamov had the most wins, and it wasn't even really that close. 49. A 909 save percentage, and only six shutouts. So he tied our guy, even though he had a bunch more dubs. Someone has to tell Makar to chill out. 86 points? What are we doing? 75 from Latang, 70 from Roman. And let's go to forwards where we see Matthews with 98. Nobody got to 100 this year. McCarr would almost be on the front page just overall. Let's have a look at goals, shall we? Clear victor there. Aha! Before I forget, 
Let's go back to our team. Why did I go that way? That makes no sense. Face off percentage. Lucic? What? He took 827 and won 461. So a 55.7. Very happy with that. 54.2 for Joe. Now before we start our playoff run, I do want to change things up a little bit. Call me crazy. But I'm putting Max Domi on line number one. He's got the perfect fit. And he's a playmaker. Now our second line has Duclair, Chandler, and Phil. Riley Smith with Barbashev and Kubalik. I'm down with this team. Defensively, still not great going on here. But it is what it is. I should have maybe got a defenseman. I didn't even think of that. I just got Kane and was basically like, yeah, job done. Smashville also finished with 43 wins. However, we had a better last 10. So we're coming in just slightly hotter than they are. Let's go ahead, sim the first three games and see what kind of situation we are in. That's a great start. Phenomenal start. That's all right. Even if they win the next two games, they can't close out the series. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate and we have ourselves the one game advantage. Will there be a game seven? Hopefully not. There is not. Closing out round one in six games is your Colorado Avalanche. And now moving on to the conference semifinals against the Vancouver Canucks. Let's go ahead. Sim the first three games again. Oh my word. We're just cleaning up here. I'm taking credit, by the way. That line change is what caused this. I am going to eat my own words so fast. Thank you. Conference finals time. We have McDusty and the Golden Knights. I believe he was on the Golden Knights. Anyway, we're going to sim the first three games as we do. That got ugly real quick. Okay, well, you know what? Let's just dip out while we can. Clearly, we didn't stand a chance. They have to go on to win the Stanley Cup. No. There's no way that they lose in the finals after dusting us that easily. Yep. Barbashev led us for points in the playoffs. What are we on here, guys? What happened? Maybe I should have kept Kachuk. Nine points in 16 games for Kane. What were you doing out there? I have so many questions. Man's decided to be a ghost in the playoffs. Sub 900 save percentage, so that's not going to get the job done. Varlamov once again finds himself at the top. A 928 save percentage is outrageous. Defensively, Dewey... 20 points in 18 games, he led, and Girard was the next closest, who played four more games and had four less points. To be fair, Makar was on pretty good pace, but got put out early. Sorry about that. EK65, 11 points in 16 games. I mean, he had more than Kane. Philip Forsberg did great. 28 points in 23 games, but too bad none of them are winning the con Smythe. It's going to go to Zabinichad, I would imagine. Or maybe, you know what? There's a sliver of a chance that Varlamov gets it. There's only one way to find out. And I'm also going to be looking for any Colorado Avalanche logos. But I'm not sure we'll be seeing any. Golden Knights cleaned up there. And we do not see any... Oh, we do! Never mind! Linus Allmark! And Zabinijad would, in fact, get the Con Smythe. Calgary was really the only team to challenge the Golden Knights. After that, it was a pretty smooth sailing experience for them. But yes, there is your multi-team players only draft. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have other draft ideas, comment them down below. And you just might see a video on it with your comment featured. The subscribe button is heading up center ice with its head down. I want to see a big hit. Or you could just click it. That works too. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. And on that note, I will see you soon.